Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to give you a detailed look at how I painted my countertops by myself for only 200 bucks and how they're doing one year later. If you've ever wanted to paint your countertops but you think you can't do it or that it won't hold up, then this video is for you. So to start out, I did this a year ago. Since then, the videos I've made about my countertops have gotten millions of views and lots and lots of brads and chads telling me how ugly they were and how terrible I am. So in this video, I'm gonna be answering all the questions, giving all the tea, and sharing everything good and bad about these countertops from the moment I did them until now, a year later. First of all, I hated my countertops before. They were a greenish, laminate, nothing fancy, nothing expensive, and they were faded and scratched. Do not confuse my crappy before countertops with anything but crappy countertops. I decided to paint them because why not? If I spent 200 bucks and it was a total fail, well, I just figured I would replace them. But I also have this weird mentality that I can pretty much figure out anything if I want to, which works out for me most of the time. I mean, honestly, there's a YouTube video out there for everything. That's why you're watching this, right? That's both a good and bad thing in my life. I have figured out how to fix my washing machine, dryer, fridge, garbage disposal, and everything else just by saying screw it and hoping for the best. I've also ruined a few things, but you live and you learn. No one's born knowing how to do things and you're gonna mess a few things up before you figure out how to do it right, so that being said, I figured I would just go for it. If nothing else, I could share my insane fail on the internet and if it went well, then that's cool too. I bought this $200 kit off of Amazon. It's made by Gianni, and I'm gonna link it down below. They did not sponsor this, though I think that that was probably a missed opportunity on both of our parts. I saw a lot of reviews for this, and from what I can tell, it appears a lot of people did not read the directions. Reading is a key part of doing this, y'all, so if you do it, read the daggone directions. The first step was to paint the countertops white. They had a bunch of different styles of kits to choose from, but my kitchen is small and dark, so I wanted it to look bright and white and bigger, if that's at all possible. So that's why I went with this white marble one. Did I think this was going to actually look like marble? No, I am no Michelangelo, okay? I was going to do my best to make it look at least sort of decent, so I did two coats of the white paint to make sure none of the ugly green countertops showed through, and then I started on the pattern. Just to introduce myself if you're new here, my name is Keely, I'm 32 years old, and my middle name is really Rainbow. I make YouTube videos about home decor, holidays, DIYs, and motherhood, and I like to keep it real. I'm a normal mom with a normal house, I just happen to show mine on the internet. I live in North Carolina, I have three kids, and I'm married to my husband Tim, who works in the oil field. I want to be your new mom friend, so feel free to talk to me, message me, tell me about yourself. I love to get to know y'all, share hacks and things that work for my family, and generally just remind you that it's okay to have days where your house is mess and days where you feel like a perfect mom because all of that is totally normal. I would love to have you subscribe. I put up videos all the time here on YouTube and I also post a lot on TikTok and Instagram.
straight with y'all, the pattern was hard. I'm an overthinker and when I stopped overthinking, it got a lot easier, but that took at least two hours of trying for me to stop trying so dang hard. I did look up pictures of marble, but again, I am not an artist, so I just did the best I could. And I'm gonna show y'all the first few attempts. Luckily, because I let the white paint dry first, I was able to wipe it off the first 800 times I tried to do this and hated it. The directions say to use a small paintbrush and then diffuse it with water. But after several attempts, what I figured out worked best for me was to use very little water and a dry paintbrush to diffuse the lines. I painted them on, sprayed like one spray of water, and then smudged it with the dry paintbrush. I have things on my countertops and no one in my real life is going to be staring at them trying to rate how close to real marble they are, to be honest with you. So I just figured as long as it looked sort of decent, then it was fine. I did the marble stripes and then also went back over with a sponge of white paint to make it look very subtle because I just, I didn't want it to be plain white, but I also didn't want it to look like zebra stripes. Eventually, I just went for it and figured it would be fine. At this point, there's nothing anyone on the internet could say to me that hasn't already been said, but if you have advice for other people about how to do it better, feel free to leave it down below and help each other out. Just be nice. new to my channel, I do this kind of stuff all the time. I DIY things on a budget and I just wing it and hope for the best. I do realistic DIYs and I'm very honest about them. And in case you're wondering what else you'll see on my channel in the next few months, then keep on listening. Next up, I'll be sharing my daughter's room refresh. She's getting a new bed and a ton of new storage because she has a lot of new stuff and my house really lacks in storage. This year, I'm also planning to redo our bedroom. We're gonna do DIY built-ins in our closet and hopefully redo our living room too with a new couch because I hate our couch. And maybe I'll paint something if I can convince my husband that I'm not crazy. I also decorate a ton for holidays. I love DIYing outdoor decor and the porch and all of that. And I'm planning to redo my back patio and backyard as the months get warmer again. So if you're not subscribed and all that sounds fun to you, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram and TikTok too. So I really don't mean to sound like a know-it-all or like snarky in this video at all. I have just had this up for a long time on different social platforms, so I wanna make sure I address all of the comments and concerns from all of the random people that have watched it in case you have any questions. Anyway, I am excited to share this process with you. I'm excited to give you guys an update on it, and I love talking to you guys. I take everything with a grain of salt. I know I put my life out there on the internet for people to critique, and I don't really care. Um, it's just really funny when people get really stressed out about things that don't even happen in their own house. But it's always usually, a, but I'll be honest, it's usually on Facebook and people on Facebook are crazy. I don't know why they're all insane over there on Facebook, but they really are. <laughs>
In a few minutes, I'll be showing y'all an updated look at my counters one year later. And I can't believe it's been a year, but I'm excited to show y'all how they've held up with regular use from two adults and two kids who are definitely not perfect. And also, I have spilled boiling water on them more than once. So stay tuned to see what it looks like now. The next step after the veining dried was the epoxy resin. This came in the kit and it was a little intimidating, but this is what makes it actually durable. A few things, this kit is for countertops. So yes, it is okay to use on my countertop. Also, when this dries, it's an inert plastic, meaning it doesn't jump off onto my food or things you set on it. However, it is not meant to be cut on and very hot things are not meant to be sat directly on it. But then again, many types of countertops that are widely available also have these restrictions, so that's kind of up to you if that's okay with you, I guess. As someone who worked in a restaurant business for 15 years and has one of the highest food safety certifications available, I don't really recommend putting food directly on your countertops or cutting on it anyway. You need a cutting board and that needs to be properly sanitized. And to be honest with you, cutting boards should also be thrown out often since the moment they get cup marks in them, they aren't food safe anymore. But I'm gonna get off my soapbox, but a lot of people wondered about that when I first put up these videos, so I wanted to throw it out there. I did a lot of research, I wanted something durable, and I'm also a food safety weirdo, so I promise this wasn't a rash decision. a lot though was that I should have used protection for my face which is probably true so you should do that if you do this probably better safe than sorry I will say this kit had no fumes though and people really expected that it smelled bad but it didn't that's kind of weird I guess the directions for mixing the two products to make the resin were also incredibly specific so make sure to really stick to that otherwise you will end up with countertops that do not cure properly and that's like the number one thing people have said I don't say this to stop you from doing it because mine turned out great but just a heads up Curing time for this was 48 hours for light use and then seven days for actual use or to like set things on them that are gonna be there all the time. During that time, don't let any standing water get on it. I did get a little spot where my sink splashed and I didn't see it, so be mindful of that. Letting it cure properly is key. It did suck to not have a kitchen counter for a week, but we went out of town during the weekend that I did this, so that did help a lot. When I poured the resin, I used duct tape along the sides that weren't painted to make like a little dam so that it wouldn't drip. It is very thick, but it does self settle. So you can use a paintbrush or a roller to smooth it out. And then you'll wanna make sure the epoxy is thick enough coating that it can self settle with no lines. Along the edges, it does stick well. And after it's poured and before it starts to dry, you gotta go back in with tweezers and pull out the dust and pop the air bubbles. It really wasn't too bad, honestly, and I'm pretty neurotic. So if I can do it, so can you.
here is a close-up of my countertops one year later. As you can see, it looks exactly the same. Sure, the veining could be better, but as far as durability goes, it has held up great. I can clean it with typical cleaners. I've accidentally done things that should have definitely ruined it, like spilling super hot liquids on it or setting things on it that should have stained it, but it's held up perfectly. The only issue is the two small water spots that I mentioned that happened when it was curing, but honestly, they're not even noticeable at all. Anyway, I still love it. Totally recommend it if you're wanting to do it, and I hope that this update helped you guys make your decision, and if you have any questions, make sure to ask me in the comments down below. As always, if you're not subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and if nobody's told you, you're doing a great job. I'm so excited for everything that is to come this year, and I will see you soon. Bye!